Management. Where were we? So you're saying you've got about 44 yes. companies in the portfolio right yeah, now. Yeah, that's right. A um, bit of a broad mix across the large end of small caps and the small end. Uh, mining services is quite a large position for us, uh, not a lot of resources. Um, but I suppose the thing we've noticed in the last three or four months is it's much more of a stock pickers market than it's probably been for quite a while. Um, you know, the active funds, you know, if you look at it, you'd be flat broadly sort of since 1st of January, um, whereas you know, during the markets just had some broad moves you know, in early, early sell-off in, in small industrials and then obviously a large rally in the resources sort of in the, in the last couple of months. So yeah, certainly much more of a stock picker's market at the moment. And does that make your job easier? Makes our job a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. But we would say that we're, we're a stock picking yeah, organisation, right? we're not, not a managed fund. So why, um, why focusing in on the mining services names as opposed to the resource names? I think, it's, look, it's a great way to leverage if your skills are in analysing uh, companies and industrials. Um, it's a great way to, to play the, the resource space without having to be an expert in resources. Um, there a lot of companies there have a huge amount of leverage. So when the, you know, when the resource companies start uh, exploring, start using more services, um, the return you can get is, is quite large in mining services. And they look more like a traditional business and far easier to analyse. And so we, we sort of started out by really putting the focus on small caps as opposed to larger caps. Um, is that your strategy right now, to sort of zero in on that small cap space? Yeah, I think small caps offers you know, the most amount of, of upside and interest. You know, they're less covered by analysts. Um, you know, the further down you move in terms of the size of the small caps, you know, you've got companies that don't have any analyst coverage. So there's a lot more price inefficiency in, in the small caps than large caps. And large caps are, are real landmines at the moment. You've got banks, you know, a huge portion of the index. You don't know what's coming out of the Royal Commission day to day. Um, so I, I actually see a lot more risk in the large cap index at the moment than, uh, than necessarily the small caps, which is, which is usually people see it as the reverse. I have to ask you because you're focus of course. Yep. Um, Telstra I believe hitting its lowest level in about 12 and a half years. Yeah. I mean when you look at that space and you can talk about Telstra but you can also bring in TPG and Vocus and the rest of the basket. I mean how difficult is that space right now overall? It's, look, it's really hard. Um, you've got a structural change in NBN uh, that's going to eat away at margins for Telstra, for TPG, and well, you know, also to some extent for Vocus, but less so than the others. Um, you've got TPG launching a mobile network, so that's upsetting the, the kind of the three larger mobile operators in Telstra, Vodafone, and Optus. So it, there's really a lot of change across you know, across the whole telecommunications um, air, you know, industry. Uh, you've got people like Kogan, you know, just on the news, you know, mm. they're, they're launching a, a very low-priced um, you know, internet, resold internet service um, that could, you know, could be sort of 5 to $7 cheaper than the prices charged by TPG and Vocus. So you've got guys disrupting, you've got an industry structural change, you've got you know, all sorts of risks in, in the sector. Um, just out of interest, are there any companies within that telco space, perhaps some of the speed cars or maybe a chorus, that you are looking at because obviously that is some of your background and you would have some insight into where you think the next telco is going to emerge from. Yeah, I think Speedcast has been a really interesting one. Um, we've been long Speedcast for, for quite a bit of time now. Um, it's done incredibly well. Uh, they're a very acquisitive business. Um, you know, the oil price recovery has been positive for that. I think if you bullish oil price, um, if you bullish the fact that, you know, cruise liners, uh, people are going to use internet more on, on cruise ships, um, Speedcast is a great play. Still, you know, really cheap, great free cash flow. Um, you know, they've refinanced their debt, they can make more acquisitions, so still really like that. Um, it's not affected by NBN, that's kind of the thematic, you've got to look in telco for things that don't have an, uh, you know, a large NBN or, or TPG disruption uh, factor. Spirit Telecom, I think last time we were on here, it's a, it's a sort of a micro cap. Um, we, we like Spirit Telecom around the sort of 12 cent mark, it's doubled to 24. Uh, I think it's probably fairly priced, you know, they'll have some exciting growth. It's a fixed wireless operator, so again, doesn't have any uh, NBN uh, kind of focus. So they're, they're two that are, are pretty interesting. You mentioned theme or thematic in there. I mean, is that sort of integral to your way of investing and, and picking and looking at the market? Yeah, absolutely. We, we almost always start with a theme, you know, what is going to be kind of the, the where are you going to have a tailwind um, rather than looking at sort of growth or value. So we could start with a theme. One of our bigger themes at the moment is, is sort of waste recycling and, uh, and, you know, kind of a couple of interesting companies there. Bingo is doing great work in that space. Uh, you know, they're taking um, product from building sites, recycling about 80% of it. Uh, and then only landfilling 20%, so they're really pioneering building a lot of recycling plants rather than just landfilling. Um, we think that's going to have a, a big focus. It's a great way to attract customers. You can charge the same price but be more environmentally kind of conscious 
uh, businesses, I think, have got more and more pressure in that space. Is Bingo moving toward actually selling them that energy as well, potentially from those recycling facilities? Because you've got to think, there was a company out there that was doing that really well, yeah. you know, actually making money from what they're taking in. Yeah. That would be a, an amazing opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, Bingo isn't at the point where they're making a huge amount of money from what they recycle. Yeah. I think it's covering costs, maybe making a little bit. Um, more to the point is they're making, it's an arbitrage. They recycle it, sell it for you know, a little bit more than they cost them to recycle it, but they don't have to pay landfill. Um, so that's where they're... But I think, you know, Bingo is probably is, is the most progressive company in that industry. Um, so what we would expect to see them do in the, in the coming years is move to more the waste to energy. So, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, you can actually create power or, or energy. Um, there's a great little small cap that we, we like is called Integrated Green Energy, and they actually turn end-of-life plastic into road-ready diesel fuel. It's an Australian company building plants all around the world. So diesel fuel you actually put in vehicles? Exactly right. Absolutely 100% road-ready. You know, I did it with my own car up, in, up on the central Does coast. Does it still work? It still works. Actually, it was my wife's <laughs> car, and uh, she's, still, she's still happy. That's the ultimate test, right? Yeah. You put it in the wife's car. Um, so it actually works. It's a, it's a pretty surprising technology. So that's the kind of the technology that I think will become more integral to, to Bingo going forward. Yeah, and when it comes to Bingo, I mean, obviously it needs a lot of investment to support its growth story going forward. Is that sort of manageable in your view? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they, the guys, uh, the thing we like, really like about the management team is they're not focused on short-term numbers. They're not focused on what the market's sort of expecting. They're actually building a really solid business and have a, have a good long-term business plan and aware of their sort of their capital structure and needs. So, you know, they could be, we think that they'll double their amount of tonnes processed by FY20, um, which is pretty exceptional growth uh, given for the price uh, the stock is in the market. How close do you get with management? How interactive are you and how receptive are they normally to you, James? It's funny, as a, as a, as a manager and a CEO going around and seeing fund managers yeah. when they told you how to run their business, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. always very polite, thank you very much, yes, we'll take that and get back to you. Um, look, we try and get as close as possible. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I've lived through small cap, or well, micro cap, small cap to ASX 100. Being, uh, being the CEO of Vocus. So, you know, when, when we can add value, we, we try to. Um, and actually, most people are, are pretty interested in that journey. And not, not a lot of people have been on that journey and then sitting on the other side of the table asking mm -hmm. the questions. So um, sometimes we spend sort of half the meeting talking about their business and then half the meeting talking about how they can solve some capital problems, what, uh, you know, what, what, what are some interesting ideas, how to approach the market, investor relations. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I've noticed about small caps is they're often a really good sort of small business, but they don't know how to communicate effectively with fund managers. And that's where you can get the price efficiency. If they're not telling the story properly, then that's a great sign, right? They've got a good business, just not getting it across. If you can actually fix that getting it across problem, suddenly everyone realises how good a business it is and, and the stock can re-rate. But you wait until you've bought it already. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I, I would like to ask you about uh, some of the changes that have been made at Vocus. We've got a new CEO there, John Ho. I mean, how, are you able to comment on the strategy? Are you able to say if those changes that are being made are, are positive? Yeah, I think there's great changes being made there. You know, I've been out of that company for two years now, mm -hmm. so I certainly don't don't uh, have anything any insight that's not public. But John Ho is the um, Jancor Partners. Uh, he owns about 20% of the company now. Uh, he's made some changes there, replaced the CEO, replaced a couple of the, M the old M2 directors. You know, I think they're long overdue changes, and it's probably widely been the view in the market that they they weren't performing. Now we've got a fresh set of eyes in there. Uh, you know, fresh CEO, a couple of fresh directors. Uh, I think that makes it a lot more um, considered as an investment. You've still got the NBN risk. You've still got Kogan, who, who may eat away at that, you know, Dodo and iPrimus user base. Um, but certainly starting from a governance and a management perspective, it's a lot more investable than it was, you know, a couple of months ago. OK, and um, just going forward, don't know if you have any further questions. Uh, basically, obviously, you're a thematic investor. So what is the thematics that you're disliking at the moment? What sectors are you completely avoiding altogether? Uh, look, anything with, uh, anything with a structural decline, a headwind, um, you know, when we're not investing in anything in telco for that reason, there's a bit of a headwind with NBN. Um, you know, we basically look at childcare as kind of a mixed bag at the moment. I think it's had a headwind um, you know, up until recently. That should change, so we're, we're pretty focused on um, that shift from, from sort of headwind to tailwind. Like GAD education? Sort of GAD education, you know, it's a very cheap business. It's probably not been liked in terms of governance historically, but they've done a lot to fix that. Uh, you know, you can't battle with the thematic of government wanting to get more women employed and, you know, subsidising uh, more for people to put their kids into childcare. So we think that's a really interesting, you know, it's probably not been a thematic we've invested in, but it's, it's, got, a, it's got a really significant tailwind coming in the next three to six months. So um, <clears throat> the portfolio is sitting at around 44 right now. Is there a, a, a prime number that you look at for uh, your portfolio and returns as well? Yeah, I think, you know, it's as many companies as you can find that have, you know, great 
outsized, outsized sort of risk reward. Um, you know, we, we're a thematic investor, but we also look at risk reward. Um, we don't want to have to stick companies into the portfolio just because of a mandate. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty bored. We have a minimum 25 and up to 75 as, as the maximum. Um, and 45 at the moment, or 44 at the moment, is, is kind of the right number. Mm -hmm. um, we certainly see there's an opportunity to broaden that, um, but it's hard to find really strong thematics that are undervalued at the moment. You know, a lot of the larger small caps are trading on enormous multiples, you know, 30, 40 times, uh, and that's great, but you know, there is a lot of risk on the downside, and they're all pretty crowded. You know, there's a lot of fund managers in those stocks. Mm -hmm. uh, when they all want to exit at the same time, when, the, when there's an earnings miss, that, that gives us a great deal of risk in terms of, you know, your upside might be 10, 15, 20 percent, but your downside could be sort of 40 percent on a day. Mm -hmm. So we're sort of staying out of that. So, you know, finding the right number is, is hard, um, but we, we think we've got a good balance at the moment.